It's time. It's time. It's time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to season two. Welcome back. Yes. How, How are, are you? I, it's like I haven't seen you in a year. <laughs> That'd be impressive. I mean, we work like down the hallway from each other now. Well, we used to for a while. You were sitting like in front of me. Yeah, I could be like, hello. Actually, I used to do that. I used to stand up and just go like, hello. Get over here. Attention. Get over here. <laughs> How's everybody doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Mm. Yeah, you know. Good. Want to learn? I do want to learn. It's time for season two of Code School. Give a quick overview of what we're doing in season two. Yeah, we can actually do that through the, the slides. Ooh, want to yeah. get right into that then? Let's get right to it. Like we keep saying in season one. Learning. Learning. Go and swap over to you. There we are. Mm. Code School, Code season school. two. <laughs> Hi, Gabe. You didn't try to hide it. No. <laughs> it's good. Why should I hide it? I don't know. Hello. Just... How's it going? I'm doing good. Yeah. Welcome to Code School Season 2. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So in this series, we are going to learn programming. Or we're going to attempt to learn programming as well as we can. So my name is Olafur Woge, and I'm a senior programmer here at Massive. And with me is Gabe. He's not a programmer, but he wants to learn. I like learn. Learning is fun. Yeah. It's so fun. You know what's the best? It's the, the aha moments. Uh-huh. They are great. Yes. They're wonderful. You were learning right before this started about yeah. cameras. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cameras are really cool. So in season two, the language of choice is C++, like we talked about in the intro video. Um, and the tool that we are going to use is Visual Studio 2019. Uh, if you do not have this tool installed, if you go back to watch the intro video to the series, at the end of the video, uh, there's a little snippet that goes through how to install Visual Studio 2019. Can someone link that in chat? I can, that can we'll happen. We'll also put it down in the description, the link to uh, cool. for the YouTube video later on for the download. Yes, sir. Cool. Um, so the tool might be a little complicated to learn, but I'm going to focus on like parts of it. And we don't even use, we're going to use like 5% of the entire tool. But again, it's great to learn. So the main point of the series, like in season one, is to learn about programming. That's the main point. It's not how to make games. This is not how make game. Damn how, it. No. I tried to do that. I know. But it didn't work. It's fine. So it's not make game. It's, but we will be using video game things as a driving force. Like that's going to be the thing that's pulling us towards learning. Because video games are cool. I like them. Mm. You like them? I do. Great. And again, I want to stress, it's the point here is to learn about programming. We are we, we want to be programmers. That's the idea. So there's a couple of changes from season one. Um, and uh, I've decided that you don't have to see season one. But you should. Season one is fun. We use a different language, uh, maybe a little bit easier to get into. Um, I have a little bit less beard, but it's fine. Uh, but I'm going to go from the beginning. So if you don't have time to go through season one, but you're interested, you don't have to go through season one. Uh, but we might do things a little bit quicker. So uh, so another change. There's going to be homework. Yeah, after, we're going back to school. Back to school. After every episode, there's homework. Um, and I'm going to be very disappointed if you don't do homework. Okay. Everybody's always disappointed in me, so I don't know what the change is here. <laughs> no change. Okay. So yeah, uh, the main, main change here is that there's homework uh, because... The main theme of season two is practice. Yay. If there's a, a single main theme, and that is practice. What I want to do is I want to give you information. We will have a conversation and a chat about a language, about programming and whatever. I will show you the tools. I will show you uh, what you can do. But the main theme is that you then have to sit down and take some time and work. Like if you just watch the series and you don't practice along, it is like it's like learning how to paint by watching someone paint. To be fair, hmm? I watch Bob Ross paint. I can actually paint something that makes a little bit of sense. Sure. But are you going to be a better painter if no, you practice I'm just along? I'm very good at painting happy little clouds. With happy friends. little clouds. What I'm saying is, is the if the 
I think that the teaching is like 20 to 30 percent of this journey. Yeah, I couldn't I couldn't go and paint without Bob Ross. Exactly. There we go. So the main point of it is I'm I'm going to give you information as well as I can. The main point is that you then sit down with information with the entire internet and then you practice. You practice, you practice, you practice. And that's the big point. So, and the end goal of season two is to build a very simple turn-based combat system. In season one, we made a pretty simple top-down shooter thing, which is like collision detection and bullets going around. And in season two, it is a very simple turn-based combat system. And the reason I picked that is we can actually build a part of it using text only. And then what I want to do is add some graphics on top of that. So that will be the goal. Will we make it? We'll see. Is box one going to attack box two? Box one. No boxes here. Oh, no. No boxes here. Oh, wow. Have we upgraded it to like triangles? Actually, it's, that's a downgrade. <laughs> like three sides in a triangle. <laughs> yeah. So that's the, that's the goal. We'll see how well it goes. Um, so are you ready? I am. Is chat ready? Chat, are you ready? I think chat is ready. So this will, I mean, people who are watching the VOD will obviously be on the VOD, but this is streamed on Twitch. Mm -hmm. There's always a VOD that will be uploaded on Monday. Yep. Um, so, on Mondays after the episode. Yep. So if you, this will be on YouTube. Yes, Hi, YouTube. If you don't catch everything, you can always catch it on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing about YouTube is you can pause and, exactly. and, and practice. And practice. And practice. We're ready? All right. We've got some readies. Let's go. Readies. Let's go. Programming. Oh, hell. Hey, oh, whoa. There we go. <laughs> I didn't know that was here. Programming. So. Uh, there are many definitions of programming, but here's one. It it functions as well as any. Uh, it's about giving instruction to some sort of processor. It's, you type out the instructions in some way, and those instructions are given to a processor, and the processor runs them. Uh, and we actually have a series on yes. this now. Beyond FPS is a series on Angon on the YouTube channel that goes into detail about CPUs and instructions. So if you want to know more about instructions and CPUs, then go look at that one. That's a nice little series. Thank you for with, the Twitch Prime Roma 005. With uh, some familiar faces. Mm. Who are those people? I don't, know. I don't know. Those aren't code school people. No. So a CPU is a thing that takes certain types of instructions, like add, we're going to add two numbers together, subtract, subtract two numbers from each other, or move, just move the data around. And this kind of a language is called assembly, usually called assembly. Um, this is just the raw instructions that go to the CPU. Like add these two numbers, move the data here, subtract the numbers, ask a question. Yeah, those kind of things. So this is pretty low level. And it can be hard to work with. Do you know that a lot of like older games uh, were written in assembly? I think you. I think you told me this. I don't remember the example you used. Uh, a lot of NES games are assembly. I think some Super Nintendo games as well, or like that kind of generation of console, and also PC uh, are written in assembly. Um, it can be okay to work with, but it it can be pretty hard. So languages like C plus plus then create a layer above assembly, so they allow you to write a bit more expressive code. So assembly is kind of the very base level. Yeah, there, there is stuff below. And there are sometimes you don't go directly to go assembly. Deep. You're very deep. Called, I think it's called microcode. That's the thing that runs on uh, the CPUs. So think of this as a layer above. C++ is still pretty low level. And it generates good assembly. That's the idea. Roller coaster tycoon. Yeah, roller coaster tycoon. That was a, that's a good example. I saw well. that from chat. I didn't actually yeah, know that. I saw that. <laughs> so. There's a lot of stuff that you would have to do in assembly that you don't have to do in C++. So we benefit a lot from the language, but also we can be more expressive. It, it reads a little bit more than text. Uh, it's still programming, but it's in that area. And if you knew the spo spoilers from season one, spoilers, um, Close your ears. The, the code that we wrote in season one is very similar in how it looks like to C++, even so much so that I deliberately wrote all the code in processing that we did in season one to look like C++ so that I could, at the end, copy paste it to C++ and it was a one-to-one -one, and, and it worked. And it worked. Yes. I had to add a bit of things to get it running, but the main logic, the main bit of code worked. 
and it was the same. So not that hard. So from C++, this code is then turned into assembly or a similar lower level language or basically low level instructions. And then it's packed into some sort of executable format. So you would have some sort of format. The instructions are in the format. When the operating system runs this executable, it's basically taking the instructions, loading them into RAM, and then running them. Like we talk about it beyond FPS, we're just running RAM, which was a revelation for you. Yeah. You just put stuff into RAM, and then you just run it. It's like code. So uh, data is data, and code is data as well. So this software that is converting the code that you write into the lower level instructions is called a compiler. It compiles the things into the instructions. So it turns, uh, it takes the code that you have written and turns it into executable instructions for your CPU. So you have, you need some sort of compiler, turn it into instructions, and then you run them. So it's, it, think of it as the layer between you and the actual CPU. Great. Um, so in C++, you run this once. You would write some code. You would compile it once. You get an executable out, usually. And you can run the executable. You could run the executable. You can also turn it into uh, a DLL. You could turn it into an object file to then be used later. So you can turn it into different things, but usually you turn it into an executable. You can double click on it, and there you go. Great. So we are going to be using Visual Studio. So Visual Studio is what is called an IDE, an Integrated Development Environment. Think of it as it has everything. Yeah. You just you open it, you hit F5, and it runs. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's my favorite. M magic. It's kind of like the game I tried to make. <laughs> a good game. But it doesn't blue screen. No, no blue screen. Damn. Good. Make maybe code good. Was, maybe that was the game. Maybe that was the game. Maybe that was the game. So it is an editor. So it's like a text editor. You can type in it. In it. Um, it's a debugger, and we'll actually uh, look at that, what that is, in a bit. And it is a compiler, or it has a compiler. So it, it's it's an integrated environment. So this is all I'm going to go into lower level code for now. Like Just know that there is an application that takes the thing you've written, turns it into something the CPU can run, and then it can run it. For now, we're then just going to think of that as magic. Magic. It's I like magic. magic. Yeah, magic is fun. So, yeah, that's it. I'm going to stop there on that. Uh, we'll go into it a little, little bit later, but for now, that's it. So, let's th think about the level above, basically. So, data. Yeah. You like data? I do. What's your favorite data? This big numbers and Path of Exile count. <laughs> Mine's from Star Trek, but. Oh, okay. That's technically <laughs> data. Technically data, yeah. All of the data. So computers love data. Oh, it's their favorite. It's all they use. They they add numbers, they ask questions, they move data around. It's it's their favorite thing. It's like me and, and soda. It's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. So data in C is stored in a thing called a variable. Great. So a variable looks like this. You would have some sort of type name. So this is the, the kind of the variable. What, what kind is that variable? Then you'd have the variable name. And when you create a variable, like in line one, you would then have to specify what is the type of the variable, and then what is it called? What do I reference the variable as? And you can also, in C++, create, you can say type name, name of the variable, and then you can also initialize it. So there's two things happening there. Line one is declaring a variable. Line three is declaring and initializing the variable. So it's both you're saying, hey, there's going to be a variable. It is called something. It is of this kind, is of this type. And also, this is the data that's going to be in it. So think of it as, as two things. And you only need to do this once when you create the variable. But would some value just be a number, or it could be the name of a function or something? Yep, it could be a number. It can be another variable. It can be. It can be a function in C++. We can do that. We can actually store functions and variables. Yeah, 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 there's a lot of fun stuff here. We're going to have a lot more options now from processing to C++. So 
So if we have a variable called health, and it, it is of the kind int, it's a type int. So it's an integer, which is a whole number. So I can either say, I have a variable called health, it is an int, I put a semicolon, that's it. I can also, in line three, I can say, I'm creating another variable, it is called lives, it is of the type int, and it has the value four in it. So the difference between those two is, um, Health we, doesn't have a value. That, yeah. That decided somewhere else then? Uh, so it is given a memory address in RAM because all code is loaded into RAM. It is just put somewhere into RAM where the executable lives. And then health gets the value of whatever was there in RAM before. So it's just, we call it junk, basically. Yeah. Uh, it is whatever was there last. So it could be the number four. It could be the number four billion. We but that know. makes sense if you're playing a game that has health. Mm -hmm. You want it to be the last value, right? Uh, you wouldn't do it like this. Okay. No, well, no. Yeah. no. I'm just trying to understand. Uh, yeah, because you would then have to be lucky that it was loaded in the exact perfect uh, location. Okay. It is whatever was there left behind by the last program that was there. So you could have opened up Spotify, used it a little bit, quit Spotify, loaded your program, and then your program just happened to go in the same location, and your health value got the got the the song length of some song you were listening I to. I suddenly have a song name as... You know, yeah, health. Or, or it's going to be a number, so it's going to be... Okay. Yeah, so usually it's... That's why we call it junk. It's yeah. just some junk that is left behind. There's a question in chat that's saying, mm -hmm. is it necessary to initialize every time we create a new variable? No, no, not at all. Because maybe you want to... Um, declare it and then because you want to create the thing before but you don't know what the value is going to be until later an example of this is let's say you want to create a bunch of bullets if we go reference to, to an older season you want to create a bunch of bullets because you want to allocate the memory for it but you don't know where they're going to be un until you shoot the gun so then you give it the x and y coordinate of where the bullet is supposed to be so you can do that later that's totally fine but you can't if you try to use the value uh, before it is initialized, it's going to be junk. So you're going to get junk. All right? Great. So when a value is stored in a variable, it lives in RAM. Where in RAM? We don't know. doesn't matter. That is taken care of us by the operating system and, and all sorts of things. Magic. Yes. And we don't have to worry about loading the variable onto the CPU. This is something you, you had to do in assembly. You had to say, take the variable, put it into the CPU, and then add it together. This The language is going to do that for us. So this is kind of an example of uh, what, the, what the programming language is doing for us. We just make variables and use them. We don't care. And for now, we're not going to care. So blank box. I'm going to go through a few types. Uh, they're called primitive types in C++. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. These are the ones I'm going to go through for now, and we'll learn about more later on. So here's one primitive. It's called a Boolean, or bool. 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 It can have true or false. So here, I have a variable called is alive. Can has, can has alive. Can has alive. <laughs> can has alive. So in, in a Boolean value, it can either all it can either be true or false, nothing else. It can't be maybe. It can't be. It it's can, alive, huh? Maybe. It, it can't be the number four. It's it's only true or false. Great. You write down booleans on a piece of paper. You get ah ah ah. Almost said that out loud. Ah. <laughs> so then we have an integer, like for example health. So it is any whole number. Positive or negative. So int can be 100, int can be a minus 100. Uh, it can be 0. It can be minus 0. Yeah, yeah, there, there are two of them. Uh, I say any whole number because there's a limit. If you were running on an 8-bit system, it can only use 8 bits to represent the int. If you're running on a 64-bit system or a 32-bit system, yeah. So... For us, let's just imagine these are any numbers, but there is a limit, and just know about the, that there's a limit, but it's big. Like int is, four, is uh, 4.2 billion. So don't worry. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. So we also have a thing called char, or care. Some people say care. 
Because it's short for character. So some people say care. No, I says char. Yeah, I say char. Um, so it is a single ASCII character. So ASCII is a uh, an old ANSI standard Copy for... Copy-paste that you put in chat. <laughs> isn't it? What? Isn't, isn't ASCII like when you just make... Uh... Oh, it's called ASCII art. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, so ASCII is uh, 128 characters. Uh, it's a bunch of like control and magic characters, like New Line and also like the the, the ping from uh, PC speakers. One of them is in ASCII. So you can actually type that as a character. The ping? Yeah. You sometimes hear like a bing, 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 bing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, but think of them as just letters. And they're only the letters that are there. So it's 128. Um, it doesn't have um, basically most special characters from languages is, aren't there. Like it's a, it's it's the numbers, it's the A through C, it's the capital A through Z. So we don't have uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Or uh, uh. Yeah. It's uh, the same letter twice. And you have a bunch of the exclamation marks and the control character and the like curly braces and all that. Those are in ASCII. Um, how you do other characters is a different topic and we're not going to go into that. There are hour-long talks on the problems of doing that. So for now, character, just and it's just one letter. It's not a string. It's not text. It's just one of them. Great. So here I have the letter C. Uh, so a float is a way to represent a real number. And I'm talking about the mathematical idea of real, which is like a floating point that has a decimal point after it. And you say float the name of the variable, and then you say some number. Here I have 56.2, and then you say f after it, because you say float. And then we have the void. <laughs> okay. And we'll, okay. Talk, we'll talk about this later. You can't create a variable of the type void. Okay. That can't happen. But void is still there. It is a fundamental type. And we we'll void talk... in uh, processing. Yes. But where would it... we didn't have it on variables, right? We had no, it on... On things we didn't want. Oh, I don't remember fully. We had it on functions. Okay. Yeah, because it didn't return anything. Okay. Yeah. I, for some reason in my head, I thought things we didn't want to repeat. No, no. Yeah, so you can't create void variables, but we can talk about this later. Great. And there are some conditions. Yes. So conditions are basically then, once you have your variable, it has some value, you want to run some code, we can ask the variable a question using then condition statements. And the main one is the if statement. We'll go into more if of them. If bad game, no make. If bad game, no make. Exactly. So here I have a 9-1. I create a variable called health. It's 100. And then I ask the question, if health is bigger than 50. And then I, I say, if health is bigger than 50, then make health 50. Otherwise else, which means that if health wasn't bigger than 50, you're I dead. put yeah, yeah, I put health at zero. So either you have more than 50 health or you're dead. Exactly. So should we try this? Sure. Yeah? yeah. So let's switch over. Uh, I'm going to show on my machine first. Um, what I have is a bunch of stuff I didn't want to run. I do 2019. So Visual Studio 2019. Uh, and when you have it disinstalled, you should see a window, something like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. And we're going to use a thing called console app for, for now. Usually we'll do empty project, but to get us going the quickest, we'll say console app, and then we'll delete a bit of stuff. I say next. And let's call this... Am I all set up here already? Episode, yes, you are. Okay. So, we'll, so we'll say episode one. And then we just hit create. And what we should get is Visual Studio. So if I can show this a little bit, I can hit Control and, and Zoom. So here I have the text that I'm editing. Up here is the name of the file. It's called episode one for now. You have a bunch of tabs where the files are going to be in. And here is the solution and then the project in the solution. 
And the only thing we're going to be interested in is source files over here. You can open this, and you can see here's the file. If I close it, I can just double click and open that again. OK, so let's do that on your machine as well. You can switch over. To double or me? It double. double. So if we have that the same, I'm going to adjust mine a little bit. There we go. So I, I don't you, have. You close this. They close oh. everything, the entire oh. program, yeah. Open it again. 2019. And then create a new project. You want to? The bottom one. Ah, yes, and then console app. Yeah. Next. Call it episode one. E Oops. Episode one. Yeah, and then just create. Then you should have the same view as I have. Mm hmm Yep. You can adjust it to the right, maybe. You can maybe shrink this one a little bit if you want. That's OK. I'm going to try to shrink the text. We're not going to be using. So the the bottom here, we can delete this for now. Okay. You can also do Control Scroll to, to increase the text size if you want. Mm -hmm. I'll make it a little bigger. And I can delete the top part here. So And I can delete the include as well. So the only oh. thing I'm going to have int main. is an int main like this. So this is a function, and we'll talk about this function in the next episode. But for now, this is the entry part of your program. So everything within those two curly braces is your application. OK? Well, it looks so much more less like less boring on this spot. Mm. Where's, all, where's all your stuff? Where's all my stuff? What stuff? I don't know. You no. have like other things there. Oh, you have uh, in the bottom, bottom uh, left corner, yes. there should be Solution Explorer. You have a class explorer. Solution, I have team and property. It doesn't say solution explorer. No. If you hit view at the top, view, there should be solution explorer. Yes. Ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we go. Cool. Okay, so we have int main. Uh, if we save this and you just hit F5, a thing will appear and then go away. Or in this case, I have it configured to not go away. So this is a program that does nothing. Press any key, close this window. Wait, hold on. It works. It works. We did it. So problem solved. Problem solved. Thank you. No. <laughs> so let's create a couple of the variables that we've been playing with. So if I say, is there a way to wrap text? Uh, we'll just not go further. Okay. I think there is, but let's not. We're not going to go too far okay. on the side. So if I create a boolean, Bool. and let's call it uh, is alive, and I say that value of that is false. All right? Dead. And then a couple of lines later, I say is alive is true. And then I again, I say is alive is false. So I have these. I first declare the variable and give it a value. And then I say that it's true, and then I say that it's false. Like This is kind of a pointless program, but I'm going to show you the debugger. Because if you can see up here, we are in debug mode. And what this means, so if I save this, you can actually click. In see, the... It also shows you, I noticed, like mm -hmm. the lighter text here mm -hmm. is stuff that's not saved. Because yeah, the moment yeah. I save, now it's now it's all good. Yes, yeah, so you okay. see the the changes in that. That's yeah, it's a it's a really nice feature. The 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 whole tool is full of really cool features. So what you can do, like again, if I run this program, if I hit a five, again it doesn't do anything. But there there is interesting thing happening. So in the the little gray region here, what I can do is I can create, I can click here. Yeah. So if we put uh -oh. a red dot on line 5, if we put one on line 7, and then on line 8, like this. So we have a, a dot just after is alive, the first one. And then we have one after the second one. And then we have one at the end on the curl brace. That's also, if you mouse over here, you can say it's a local variable. It's called bool. It is alive. You can mouse over all sorts of things. So if now if we hit F5, a certain thing will happen. And I'm going to no, don't have the application open. You have a thing here called diagnostic uh -huh. tools. You can actually close that for now. The this thing here, yeah. Okay. So we can have 
let me shrink this again and let me raise this so we can see it. I'm just gonna watch you. Yeah, you can watch me. So here it says it's alive. You can see there's an arrow on this one. What it's saying is it's this variable here. And now when I mouse over, it says is alive is false. Because this red dot is now the application frozen in time. It is stopped here before line number five has executed. So line because number five. Because it's wrong or just because the red dot does that? Because the red dot does okay. that. The red sto dot stops the application just before we run this line. So if I hit F5 again, what will happen is we will run this line over here and go down to the next red dot. So if I hit it, so is alive is false, I hit it. Now it's true. Now it's true. It even tells me how much time it took one millisecond to do this, <laughs> or less than one millisecond. So slow. <laughs> and now if I mouse over it, it is true. And then if I hit it again, it'll be false. Mouse over it, it'll be false. So he, this is called a debugger. And what the debugger will do will is allow us to, uh, at any point, if I stop, if I hit the stop here at the top, and I say like, oh, I have a bug over here that the value is, is true. Why is the value true? I can hit it. I will go down here and I can look at the values and I can look at all the variables down here. So if we create more of them, so if I say is alive is false, if I say int health is 20, if I say float uh, location is 48.1f, I can maybe delete these, save, and put the line here, the dot here. If I hit F5, you'll see I have all the values down here. Yeah. Uh, I put it on line 6. But it's interesting. Put it on line 5. I'll, you'll see an interesting thing happen. You see that health has some value, 20, or whatever you put it. Is alive is some value for you. Look at the I value in, in float location. There's a... Oh my god. Oops. Oops. It's, Oops. it's called autos. Autos? Oh. Yeah. It's, yeah, that one. There you go. <laughs> I deleted one of the things, though. It's okay. We can oh. put them back. Yeah. You can see that uh, your value, because you put uh, 48.1 yeah. in float, but what is the value in, in location? Minus a big number. It's junk, right? Yeah. So if you put the red dot on line 6, and then Better hit a five. Oh, it's okay. Now, uh, now it's forty-eight point almost one. Almost one. <laughs> almost one. Which is a, I'm not going to go into why that is for now, but yeah, because you you can never get an accurate value. You get an approximation of the value. So, you got it. Yeah, okay. It's autos. There we go. Yeah. So we've created these three values. So let's try the if. Where we can ask the question. So if I stop it, and let's use health like like in the example. So I erase everything but int health. So get rid of the dot. Um, yeah, you can you can remove the dot if you want. And then I ask the question if. Oh, there you go. If health is greater than ten, for example. Then I say health is equal to zero. It does all the brackets too. Yeah. <sighs> it's a very good editor. Oh. So let us do a thing. Uh, oh, we can... he Heath. <laughs> Heath, yeah. Yeah, Heath. And, th and there you saw it put an underline. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't yeah. know what Heath is. Heath is. So if you put the dot here and you five. in five, for example, and you put a dot in seven, and then let's run it. You can see the dot is in, in five. And then we hit a five again. We go into BF. And then, and you can see the health is still 20. Yeah, because we're not actually lower than 10. Uh, no, because we haven't run that line yet. You always stop before the line is executed. Oh. So we're now in the if, but we haven't run the first line yet. And then I hit a five again, and the program quits. But. Yeah, so if we do an else, if I enter else, and I do the brackets. 
and then I say, let's say health is equal to 100 or something. So if I then put a dot in 11, and then I put a dot at 13 at the end of the program, another nice thing is if you click on the curly brace, and you click in the beginning of it, it actually line lights up uh. the matching. Like, oh, this is that one, yeah? And this is that one, and this is that one. So now we have an if here in the beginning of the if. Sorry, uh, uh, it's called a breakpoint. A breakpoint at the beginning of the if. A breakpoint. Yeah, it's a point where you should take a break. <laughs> we have a breakpoint in the if, if it's greater than 10. And then we have a breakpoint in the else. And then we have a breakpoint at the end. So what is your, what do you think the breakpoints will hit? Like we'll hit this one. Will we hit this one over here? Uh, no, because, well, yes, because health is greater than 20, uh, 10. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we will go in here. Yeah. Will we hit the breakpoint in 11? No. Yeah, because we went into the first one. Yeah. And then we will hit the last one. So we we'll just skip 11. Yeah. So if I hit here, great. Let me adjust this a little bit. So we are in 5. It's yeah. great. We hit it again. We go into 7. Yep, exactly. And then we should go to 13. There we go. We skip it. Oh, need to bring mine down a little bit. Mm -hmm. eh, close enough. <laughs> yeah, and then the program exits. Great. Cool. So if we go back to uh, my coding setup. Yes. I messed up my screen. so it's okay. I lost the little window. It's OK. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about a little bit is scope. Someone's asking what version of Wind, uh, Visual we're using. 2019. 2019 the yeah. community version. Community version. You can look at the, the second half of the intro video to see uh, how we install it. Mm -hmm. um, question to devs. Have you used live code Visual Studio? Curious if more of an indie tool or something. I haven't used it. Uh, we've tried it out. Could you, I can code with you. That's a feature. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, we've tried it, but we sit next to each other, so it's not a, not a thing we've used. Five. <laughs> so, scope. Uh, scope is a thing that restricts visibility of the code that is within it. So variables only exist within the scope they are created. Like we saw in, in main, we created the variables in the main scope. So if we have main, looks like this, and there's a hint that there's going to be more code over here, and I create a variable called health, like we did before. Then I create some sort of if to ask a question. And inside the if, I create a variable called damage. I'm hard coding the value, but it doesn't matter. This is for examples. So I'm, I'm creating a variable inside the if scope in on line 7 that's called damage. And then I say health is equal to health minus damage. So I take away the damage from the health, and I make health that value, basically. But is this basically saying, no, this is basically saying if your health is more than 50, you're going to take 10 damage. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So this variable damage only existed within the if block and nowhere else. So when the if block was created, on line 7, we create the variable damage. On line 9, when those curly braces end, that variable goes away. It doesn't exist anymore. You can't use it. You can't refer to it. So if I have, if I then say, let's restore health. Health potion. Yeah, I use the health potion. Heal me. Mm -hmm. So I restore the health back. I can create an empty scope. As, this is just a scope. It has no condition. It, it's not a function. It's just a scope. I can, again, create another variable with the same name give it another value, do it again, and it will, you can take the damage again. And those two damage variables, the one on line 7 and the one on line 14, are not the same variable. But what's telling you to go into the second one? Or the second one just always happens? It always happens. Okay. Yeah. So think of what's happening on between line 13 and 16 is just an, it's called an empty scope. I'm just creating a scope. I create the scope. I can create a variable. When 
online 16, when the scope is over, damage goes away automatically. It cleans this up for us. But from line five to nineteen, in the five to nine, it's an you can think of it as an if scope or a conditional scope. It's a scope that only happens if health is, is bigger than 50. But again, on se line seven, we create the variable. All right? So let's try this out real quick. Let's go back Double. to let's go back to the, the coding. So here, if I take away these, so let's try this. That's by removing the else, so we only have the if. And let's create a variable here called the int damage. Let's say it's 10. And I say health is equal to health minus damage. There we go. No, oops. Mm -hmm. The health minus damage. Yeah. And then let's restore health back. Health is equal to 100. I'm really bad at typing L's. It's OK. And then I want to create an empty scope. Just create a scope. There I can create damage. Let's say that's equal to 20. And then again, I say health is equal to health minus damage. There we go. Save. Great. So again, let's make health a little higher. So <laughs> it's a little bigger. So health is 100. If health is bigger than 10, I create some sort of variable called damage. Make health equal health minus damage. I restore the health. This is also nice. If you click on health, it will highlight everywhere. There's no it is. auto correct. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote Heath again. Heath. And then, and you can see that if I click on this health, you see that it notices, oh, this is the same variable all over. If I click on the damage, look what it does. Ooh. It doesn't select the other one. It doesn't. Because it's not the same variable. Yeah. Smart. Smart. So let's put a, um, so since I want to focus on the scope, let's put a breakpoint on 8, which is the after where we create damage. Let's put one on 11, put one on 15 here, just after that, and let's put one at 17 at the end of the program. So then, well, let's put one at 3, sorry, in the beginning, just so we see that damage doesn't exist. So if I hit F5 on this, and I go to my autos, you can see that there is no damage variable. There's actually no variable because health yeah. hasn't been created yet. But yeah, there's no damage isn't there yet. If I hit a five, oh. damage is there. It's 10. 10, and health is there. Still at 100 because we haven't run the thing yet. If I hit a five. So, so when it's hmm? the arrow is there, it's stopped at eight. Yes. It's just telling us that eight is the last line it didn't do. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, then exactly. I so, so everything above that, it's done. It's done that. So now, yeah. yeah. So if I then hit F5, we no. see that damage is gone because it only lived within this scope. And we took damage. We took damage. Now we're at 90. And then we haven't run this yet. So if we run it now, we're back at 100. Oh, yeah. We have a new damage. Weird. Damage is back. We got weird things. Can you see? I'm on output now. Oh, you weren't in the... I think the window is... How do I get my window back? Oh, there, there it is. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. So I think it, you can detach windows. Yeah, so I think it's I, detached. How do I retach it? Uh, the, yeah, there you go. Bam. It's fine. <laughs> You're good. Because you can have like floating windows yeah. and put it into your second monitor. That's kind of kind of neat, but we can fix that. Um, yeah, so damage is back. But this is not the same damage. It just has the same name. Yeah. It just happens to have the same name, but it's it's a completely different variable. So we haven't run this yet, so we're still at 100 health from the last time. And then if I hit a 5 again. It's like right when they're about to hit you. Like, yeah. uh, just before. Now we took damage. We took damage, took the 20 damage, health is at 80, and the program ends. Whoop. There we go. So then you can see both this like called it's often called control flow, where the flow of the program goes through. Uh, we'll look at more when we start to create functions. We can see the program jump up and down between the function and everything. But you can also see that you can have scopes. Uh, things can live inside of scopes. And then if they're created within the scope, they'll die once the scope exits. And we, uh, we, I, I call this like, I call it variable 
dying or going away or being deleted. It's kind of kind of brutal. Yeah, it's gone. Someone in chat asking, does that mean the main thread is technically a function? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, so let's go back to the presentation. Yes. Being asked in chat, when do these streams happen? So these streams are, when we have an episode of Code School, they're always on Friday mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock. CST. C well, soon CET. CET. From now on. Yeah. So 2 o'clock in the afternoon, like Central mm -hmm. European time. And the VOD will be on YouTube. Yeah, well. the following Monday. So yep. if you want to join us, you Please can find do. links in the description below for those of you watching uh, the VOD. So let's go back. Yes. Homework. Time for homework within 45 minutes. I might actually be able to use the excuse to cat ate my homework because he eats my PC cables. So, yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's time for homework. So we've been learning about variables. We've been playing around with Visual Studio. We've looked at conditions a little bit, played around with them a little bit, and we looked at scopes. So th even though these things seem pretty primitive and simple, this is the foundation of most work that you do as a programmer. So if you don't understand this really, really well, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to seem very complicated. So. Um, for those watching on, on Twitch, you can screenshot when I show the homework. For those on YouTube, you can just pause the, ma the magic of YouTube. <laughs> you can also there, there will also be a Twitch VOD for those of you who want the VOD before yep. Monday. Cool. Uh, so, you alive. homework is in two sections. Section one. And I can, I can pause like on a fun screen. Uh, so, create variables using all of the types that we talked about. Um, and try changing the values. Try to break them. So like, the types we talked about. Yeah. So Bulls. boolean, yeah. Or bool, int, float, and char. So inspect them in Visual Studio. Watch them change. Um, and then you have a couple of questions. Can you assign variables of different types to each other? Like, can I create an int and give it the value of a char? Can I create a bool and give it the value of an int? What happens? Why? So think about that. Uh, and can you add together, plus together, variables of different types? What happens when you say char plus char? What happens when you say bool plus bool? So or try that out. Bool plus char. Bool plus char. So play around with this. Um, uh, yeah, basically try to break it. The, the editor will give you curly brace, no, not curly brace, like a squiggly underline to say tell you why. You can try actually. You can try googling those because there's so many resources out there. Like this is the, I think the third most used language in the world. So there's going to be people who have similar problems to you. What's the first? I think it's Java, because it's very like in business applications. Uh, so this is homework number one and number two, is using scopes. So practice using conditions and scopes. Um, can you ask questions of all the types? Like can you ask? Um, like we, we, we used int, we used an if on an int. Can you use if on a char? Can you use if on a bool? Can you use if on a float? Can you say uh, if float equals four? Like what happens? Uh, can you use variables with different types in if statements? Uh, like can you ask if bool is bigger than an int? Like play around with that. Uh, can you put scopes anywhere? Like can you put a scope inside of a scope? Can you put a scope inside of an if statement? Can you put a scope outside of main? What happens? So that's uh, number two, if you want to break, pause. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yeah, so those are the two homeworks. If you want it again, homework number one is to play around with the variables of all the types, try to break it, see what the editor does. And then number two, play around with the scopes. And this is the most important part of Code School is, and it's going to be pretty simple now in the first episode, uh, but it will be a little trickier once we have more tools to work with. So, and yes, like Seppa says, Google is your best friend. Google is, oh, I love Google. I love searching. There's, there's, how, do I, how do I turn my homework in? <laughs> so um, homework is for you, basically. It's not for me. Um, I'm, you are responsible for your own education. So I'm giving you tools to be productive. I'm giving you tools to be 
uh, to take in knowledge and education. Very Nordic approach of you. Yeah, I am Nordic, apparently. And uh, if you don't do homework, I mean, that's it's only you that's going to lose from that. Like You can sit and watch all the episodes. That's fine. Hello. That's, Hi. It's uh, totally fine. But if you want to learn, if you want to get value out of this, then you need to do homework and you need to sit down and you need to break it and you need to be stuck and not understand. And Because I'm... I've been pr- programming since 98. I'm still Googling and I'm still stuck and I'm still learning and there's still stuff that I don't know. So you need to learn. You need to be okay with not knowing and then having a problem and being stuck. And don't don't even worry that, uh, like, oh, these sim- seem like simple problems and why am I stuck on something simple? I was stuck on something simple. I've I've had problems where it was just a very obvious solution. That's that's totally fine. We're human. Cool. Cool. Uh, someone's asking when the next stream is. So same time next week. Uh, yep. Two o'clock Swedish time, mm-hmm. uh, Central European time. Uh, so that's November first. Yep. Um, VOD, as we mentioned, always out on the Monday after the stream at mm-hmm. around five p.m. Central mm-hmm. European time. If you do want to, if you are watching the VOD and you do want to join us on the stream, there's a link down to our Twitch channel down below. Cool. Um, uh, yeah. Yep, the episode is over now. Uh, we'll hang for like 10 15 minutes in chat after the stream um, for a chat and QA and have a little fun. Uh, if you want that, please join us live. But, uh, but th- otherwise, thank you, you for next. Bye. Bye.